Hello and welcome to another episode of Honest Sum Up with myself, Duncan, aka Whiskey Tip, Mike, aka Whiskey Wings, and this week we've got a special guest, Annabel Thomas, the founder of Nooknean Distillery. Welcome, Annabel. Hello, thanks for having me. You're more than welcome. You're increasing our ratio of ladies on the pod, so this is a good thing. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Massively. We've got Libby. That's it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and one Scotch person. One Scotch person so far, maybe two? Two. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We're trying to keep it Scots free. Just, just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Mike, what's the, what is the name of the episode today, my friends? So, we are episode 59, and the episode is called Head, Shoulders, Neck, Knee, and Toes. Very good. Genius. Genius. So, Annabelle, would you be so kind as to give yourself a bit of an introduction for our listeners today as the founder of Neck, and Distillery? And feel free to dive into a dram. Oh, yeah. Pour a dram as well, sure. Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. I'm Annabelle. I'm the CEO and founder of Nicknean. Um I started Nicknean back in 2013. And before that, I did something totally and utterly different, which was be a strategy consultant in London. So big corporate job working for a big corporate company, working for big corporate clients. Um, I did sort of vaguely work in consumery, retail things, but it really wasn't whiskey. And yeah, I came to whiskey through basically the idea to start Nick Nian. I haven't I hadn't worked in the industry before and went for it. <laughs> yeah, I just went for it. It's always these people in these big corporate jobs and they just go, I'm gonna start a company, I'm gonna get money out of people. It's yeah. it's very impressive. I'm moving to Scotland, they're gonna set up a distillery. Very I impressive, yeah. Well, yeah, but you see, I didn't think I was gonna do it for very long. I don't know what I thought was gonna happen. <laughs> I think if anyone starts a business full stop, especially in whiskey you kind of can't really know what you're getting into because you never do it. So when I left my old job, I thought I was going to do it for two years. And my mentor actually said, I think you should plan to do it for at least five. And here I am 11 years Love later. It. Well, it shows it was successful. So yeah, good, good choice, I think, exactly. on your part. So, I mean, so it must have been uh, quite the journey to go from, you know, zero to uh, distillery. How many, how much volume are you guys putting out at the moment? And um You've done, I think you've done so many batches of the, must be over 10 now, something or like. Yeah, well, we are laying down the equivalent of about 300,000 bottles right, a year. Okay. As with all new businesses, you go through learnings. And when we, I've always been really focused on transparency. I, always, I don't want to hide anything. Hmm. I want everyone to know the good, the bad and the ugly. And one of the things that we also do is tell everyone about the whiskey that we made, like when it was made, when it was bottled. Of course, the Scotch whiskey regs means there's quite a lot. You can't tell people, but I always wanted to have batch codes on the bottles. So off we go. We bottle our first batch. We call it yeah. batch one. And then things progress and we're like, batch 10, okay. Batch yeah, you 14. kind of get to the point. And we're thinking, where is this going? Yeah. Batch 114. <laughs> like, And at the same time, we actually tweaked our recipe a little bit long story, but some of the sherry butts, which weren't ready to begin with, were then ready. So we added oh, them okay. in and we thought, right, we've made a mistake. We shouldn't have done this numerically. <laughs> so we then changed to like a coding system that's not sequential or anything. It's just two less two numbers. And then we've gone on from there when we changed the recipe. So in terms of the number of core batches we've put out, I actually don't know. It must be like 25, so, maybe. Oh, wow. But they've also got bigger in size as we've grown. Mike, so. Mike and I, because we, we saw what you were doing, we'd had a lot of t-shirts printed. With, I've tried batch, you know, 72 of Nugnean. It's cost me a fortune. We had hundreds of t-shirts in them. We had to get rid of all of them. <laughs> uh, I, I had them pre-made. I went up to seven. It's a great talking point. We're out. Oh, have you tried batch 73 as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> so the, the bottle's pretty radical, isn't it? Like, both in terms of, mm. like, you know, um, what you've how you've approached it, but also in terms of kind of how it looks within the whiskey industry. I'm sure you get asked about it a lot. Mm. It It's quite artistic. Mm, very. Yeah. Mm. Stands on a shelf. Well... But it is also recycled yeah, glass and everything it else. It is, yeah. Like, um, um, I don't know why I'm getting this to show you because none of your listeners will be able to see, but um, I sort of feel the need to reach for it. Um, yeah, so there's a few different bits of that story. The recycled glass is part of our sustainability commitments. Um, we were super lucky to find it because we launched the whiskey in August 2020 and we only found the bottle in November 2019 so we'd already started designing with a whole new bottle different bottle which we had to throw away and the look of it scotch is amazing the traditions are amazing there are already over 100 distilleries yeah. and my feeling coming in was that 
traditional scotch is already amazing. There's not really a need for another traditional oh. scotch distillery. They're awesome Bombshell. and they're there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, my whole reason for starting in the end was to try not to do the traditional thing. And that goes for everything. Like, as we'll talk about later, the, the free sample campaign that we did, but also the look at the bottle. And we went to some of the kind of well-known whiskey bottle design companies. And I felt like we were going to get something that looked like all the other bottles. Yeah. And then we found this really amazing design company who had done nothing in whiskey they'd worked for ted baker the fashion Mm. brand they'd worked for renault trucks i mean i didn't even (laughs) know they needed a design agency i was going to pick out one on the basis of one of those two (laughs) trucks yeah yeah it definitely wouldn't be ted baker (laughs) and all these other brands like running brands and like outdoor brands and like a real proper mishmash and yeah i they i felt like they really got what we're trying to do so we picked them and that's what they came up with. And I think it's, a, I mean, obviously it was a very long process mm. that involved many design changes, but I felt that, yeah, what they got to really embodied what it was. Yeah. But it's 46% as well, I think, right? Which is it good. Is Which well, that's, that's the biggest gripe yeah. that most whiskey fans have when it comes to, yeah. um, you know, a whiskey that, whatever it is, a premium whiskey or, you know, that's relatively young. If it's less than 46%, a lot of people have a bit of a winter yeah. about it. So it's always good to know non-chill filtered as well yeah so they should because that i mean you can't really bottle it under 50 46 percent and not chill filter mm-hmm. and the chill filtering takes out is which i find especially in nick Nean, this absolutely lovely oiliness mm-hmm. and texture and why would you want to get rid so of that you, you mentioned about scotch whiskey earlier so you know we have a few questions that we usually ask guests on the pod so one of the main one of the main ones is what three you know if you go to a pub and it, you know cause it's a pub. Don't think about when these pubs with amazing whiskey selections. When you go into a pub and it's a bit rubbish and they haven't really got a clue, you go, oh, yeah. come on, can't you just have a couple of decent bottles behind? What three bottles of whiskey yeah. would you pick to go behind a bar or a pub? With any any budget? Oh, yeah, this is for this you. Like this is to be a bog This is standard. your perfect. Yeah. Oh, this is for me. We've when had people I come in here with tight and they're like, oh, I'd have these three cheap bottles. We've had other people go for more. It's just whatever you want to have behind a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, well, one will be Nick Meehan, obviously, but I'll, I'll come to that at the end. Um, the first, I think, would be probably Brook Laddie okay, Organic, yeah. given nice. that that is very close to my heart. But the reason for Brook Laddie is because when I was starting Nick Meehan, I really looked at them as the guys who were doing, like, sticking their neck out and doing things a bit differently. Sure. And I think I've always really respected that. Um, whilst uh, producing cool whiskey, doing lots of cool things in whiskey, and yeah. I've just always loved their philosophy now. I mean, they've changed hands since then anyway. Obviously, they're now owned by Remy, but they've still managed to maintain mm. that philosophy, I feel, which is pretty mm. cool. The Michael Provenance series is a good example yeah. of that. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly, exactly. They're also B Corp certified like us. And yeah, they do an organic, and I think organic's really important. So I'd pick their one of their yeah, organics. Nice. So that would be the first one. The second one would probably be something by Compass Box. Because I also think what they're trying to do is really brave. I also think that whiskey is amazing, obviously. But the question is, there's which some, one? Whilst you're saying that, there's that some deals on Waitrose Cellar at the moment, um, getting rid of some old stock of Compass Box. So if, if you're big fans of Compass Box, it's worth checking out Waitrose Cellar. They've got three or four of the more. Oh, um, I am a big rarer, fan. Great. I don't three or four of the rarer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not super rare, but you know, like you know, not your yeah. leading stuff reduced by a fair yeah. sort of twenty twenty five percent sort of. So it's worth having yeah. a look. You're a big fan of uh, what's the orchard? Orchard house. Yeah, orchard house. That seems to get talked about a lot. That one. Mm, so good. So would that be your pick, or would you go for a different one from them? Well, I was going to say spice tree, actually. Nice. It's also really good. It's quite hard to pick. They also did that amazing Calvados blend. Did you try that? I can't remember. It was called. That wasn't. It was a one-off challenge. That Spaniard was it? The Spaniard. No, because it wasn't a whiskey. Because they actually put Calvados with the whiskey. Oh, didn't know they did that. I can't remember what it was called. No, it was a re- it was like there were only three hundred bottles. But I got one. I oh. drank it obviously. Can't remember what it's called. It was so cool. Anyway. So so that's your two choices. So spice spice food by Comes Books and one of the Brook Laddies, possibly Brook organic, organic organic, yeah. And then and then I think just Nick Me and Organic, because I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Just our our hero product. I mean it, <laughs> it is it's good on its own and it's good with soda. I've tried both. I've also tried three of the batches now discontinued into different ways so uh yeah i agree it's it's a it's, awesome. a, it's a solid uh, a solid whiskey so we should before we do that mike we should do what's been in your glass and what's been up your ass in the last oh, week shouldn't yeah. we? right so yeah 
do you want to start us off this week then mike and then we'll come around to annabelle so what's been in my glass uh not a massive amount of whiskey um other than what we're going to talk about later on on another topic bimba we drank a, a lot of bimba at your house um it took me a while to recover the next day. I'm not going to lie. Did not feel great. Got home sweating. It wasn't warm. We throw, um, Animal, just for your information, we throw the best two-man corporate parties. It's renowned. I love it. That's what you need. That's okay, what you need. Yeah. yeah. How many did we go through of the Underground series in total? We did nine out of the ten in the end. But it's because we took departures to try like 96 Nevis and... 96 yeah. talkers and stuff like that that's why so yeah quite, other than that what not night? a lot because i'm still recovering but uh Lightweight. so yeah, yeah basically yeah and what's been up my ass is illness um isla got a temperature had to go to a and e oh no and then put on antibiotics and all sorts of stuff and like me she is allergic to penicillin so i have spent the last four or five days covered in shit watery shit and you're just trying to get liquid into her it's coming back out and the doctor went you started it now you may as well finish it i'm like what can you not change her onto something else and he's like nah just go with it so yeah honestly this this week has been testing to say the very least yeah. but yeah touch wood she's back on track she's happy she's very hot i, I used to <laughs> yeah. i used to tell my missus that if i was bringing up a child on my own I just like, you know, get them to sleep and then just sit and play computer games for a few hours. And your testament to the fact that I was talking absolute nonsense. It's just not oh. possible. Well, Lara's away this week, mm. so I am solo dadding. Mm. And as we talk right now, I'm looking at her on CCTV sleeping. But having an eight-month-old on your own, I, I don't know how people do this every day. Like, even a few days is killing me. Mm. So, yeah, there is no downtime. As soon as she's down, I'm just like, right, I've got to wash up, do this, do that, do this. And it's like and bedtime. Clear up yeah, shit. Clear up and it shit. all starts again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really is the hardest job. And Annabelle, what's, yeah. in your, what's in your glass? Remember what have you had over the last few days and um, what's been annoying you? You don't have to. Some people are, are sunshine well, and light, but we do like it if people have a little gripe. <laughs> You know, you're welcome. <laughs> I've got a gripe. Excellent. I've yes. got a gripe. So I was at the distillery last week, which was lovely. Uh, I go there about once a month. and But part of the reason for going last week is because we had a board meeting up there. So that was cool because the board, all of my directors only get up there about once a year. And so we did a big nick me and tasting of lots of our single casts and things that they might not have tried because they've been released for different markets or whatever, including one I hadn't yet tried. So that was fun, which was a cognac. Oh, nice. Oh, yes, yes, good, yes, yes. Which was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Did it have those kind of like the sort of dried kind of raisiny notes that come from cognac or did it gone a different direction? It, it's slightly gone a different direction, although I do want to retaste it because I had tasted quite a few others by then. And <laughs> yeah. it wasn't, you know, when you're like, you should I was have started with that one. It was definitely it whiskey. Know, it tasted like whiskey. It's always that regret, isn't it? When you're like <laughs> six, six samples in, you're like, now you're trying the one, you should have, you should to try it at the start yeah yeah <laughs> yeah exactly no but i wouldn't say it was raisiny more um quite complex actually and with lots of notes that i wouldn't necessarily have expected from cognac right that sounds um but what i should have done is just walk out the room leave the board on their own and go and taste it in a dark <laughs> corner on my own but I didn't oh, i'll be back in uh, <laughs> just, just got, got into a fight instead <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um, so you're having your board meeting trying those samples up at the uh so that was cool. And then the next day I get back to London. I try to get back to London and I got home at three in the morning. Oh. So my gripe is travel delays. I actually, I was sat on a train coming into London, the train stopped. <laughs> and the poor driver who I do feel worse for in this situation was like, there is an unexpected blockage on the line. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are we in? Thomas the Tank yeah. Engine. Like... It, 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 it's actually baffling, so, isn't it? The stuff that happens. I know. So, so the driver had to walk to the other end of the train, drive it backwards <gasps> to the station. So you act like the station we'd already... <laughs> he went to the other side of the train. Got a weird react. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Yeah, to drive it the other way. Drove it back to the previous station, at which point apparently we were really close to London as well by this point. Drove it another route. Can I just ask, had you had you paid for one of those tickets where you choose which way you want to face? Because some people are very particular about the direction of, that they're facing during travel. And I can only imagine that those passengers, that was probably one, that was very, <laughs> that very like, I, I paid to face forwards. I refused to let the train go backwards. <laughs> 
I love it. It's just, I always think it's one of the, <laughs> one of the, the darkest one of things tickets, about training. Like uh, when they're like, do you want to be on a table? I'm like, yes. Do you want to have a plug set? I'm like, yes. Do you want to choose which way you face? I couldn't care less. No, it doesn't affect me in the it's slightest. A train. But... I'm pretty sure you, you don't get yeah. your choices anyway. So. Oh, man. <laughs> That's awful. Having Could they not? Uh, this is why I don't understand why there are so many train platforms outside London that they could just stop at, open the doors, do something with it. Like, no, no, we're going to go all the way back to the last stop. And you're like, Argh. I know. And then also why the driver had to walk through the train <laughs> rather than along the platform as well. I also really don't <laughs> understand because I felt really sorry for him, right? Because there's a lot of quite annoyed people. It's now like, we were meant to get in at one thirty in the morning mm. or something horrendous. There's been all sorts of delays before this. And then we're going backwards at one thirty in the morning in the wrong fucking direction. So there's quite a lot of like drunk, annoyed people. You're like, I would not put myself in that situation. Yeah, like every every five, four to five episodes now, someone has a rant about trains. It's a common thing. I know. Exactly. Standard, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Dan? What's been in your glass? What's been up your ass? Well, you know, um, I made a stronger stuff. So I had Friday night with um, a neighbour. And we got in it. And actually, one of the things we tried during the night was that uh, Nian Spirit drink. Is that right? With the uh, yeah. the pink grapefruit, the botanical. the botanical type thing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty decent. She yeah. just said that I should have served it with a slice of fruit, but otherwise, uh, it was uh, it was approved. Um, I've been drinking more of that 1996 Glen Tockers Mossburn nice. 12 year old Foursquare because it's quite a fruity, quite a fruity uh, whiskey. But the whiskey I'm totally obsessed with at the moment is that Redbreast Iberian. Is it Quattro oh, Barillas? Oh, so my good. Days. I've Ooh. gone from like yeah. red breast whatever to just inject just it this. into my veins at all moments of the day. I think Sweet tooth. It is a duty-free special, isn't it? Yeah, it's a duty-free special. I think about 75 quid. And it's, is it? Where, where do you, can you get it in UK well, duty-free? Um, this was... was where, it, where do you get it? Coming in I to got, the UK, I think. I got a, a, an Irish gentleman... Um, bought it for me coming back from holiday and then I met him for pints in London so shout out to Sav if you listen to the podcast and um, he was like you know we did a whiskey exchange sample swap you know that sort of nerdy thing to do and then uh, I gave him some cash for this bottle Um, and I opened it on that night Annabelle and we tried it you know at pubs now when you go into pubs and they have the little water glasses so we to be clear we were purchasing alcohol from said pubs I was like I can't be a don't buy don't buy us don't buy a whiskey as well we'll just get three pints of uh guinness and then Squash. get the water glasses and we'll have a whiskey with it outside which is what we did at about two or three pubs and then we're giving Perfect. it to randoms so about half this bottle made it back and it's incredible um it's like salted caramel dried fruits loads of you got so protective of that the other day you were I, was there. It, like, I could see I in your eyes gonna, it was so good i was like that's gone mate and he's like no you're not no you're not yeah. <laughs> really telling me off especially when you can't get it well, that's it oh, I, mean, so I, have, I have to get a flight you know you know i have to persuade somebody who's traveling to buy me a ball the thing is is because they actually sell for a lot of money in the secondary market i doubt a lot of people are going to drink them um mm. But uh, but after trying that one and the Tawny Port edition before, they they're really onto something. What they've done there is they've taken the usual mix of Oloroso, you know, some American oak and Tawny Port, mm. and then into that they'd put some uh, a bourbon barrel from like you know from the states from somewhere, just uh, yeah. to give it a bit more sort of vanilla and sweetness. What's been up my ass is I don't know about you two, but I don't weigh myself very often. But when I do weigh myself, <laughs> and I wanted to weigh myself the other day. I got out the electric scales and every time, this could be once every six months, I get them out and I put them down. Too heavy. No, Mike. It goes, you must change the battery. So I change the battery and then I'll weigh myself. I'll put them away and then, uh, you know, or I can't find a battery. So I'll go out, change. So what happens is this time I couldn't find a battery. So I've gone out to buy a battery. Then I I won't change the battery for a few days and then I won't weigh myself and I'll leave them. And I guarantee when I go back in three months time, it will be out of battery again. (laughs) Are you like leaving them in the cupboard with something on no. them so it's constantly weighing <laughs> I think, something? I think, I think they must just be constantly on in some way. I don't, yeah. Oh, hang on. Now you mention it. Yeah. I've, I've, like, where is Duncan coming just to Just putting the hover on it every time. time. I've, left, yeah, I've, left the, I've left the cabinet on them. Yeah, now you mention it, Annabelle. Yeah. So is that. I tried to clean Leo's teeth again. The old teeth debacle. Uh, he hates it. So um, that was painful. 
And I told you, get get the plaque off. That's all a dog needs. Don't honestly. Barley bit my hand when I tried to like brush his teeth. I've, I've got some of that stuff, kind of like a natural organic version. But um, I actually mm. wanted to try and brush his teeth. It's, I feel like it's become like I, he sh- I feel like he should just let me. So I'm at the point now <laughs> where I'm I'm, t- I'm 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 gripping him and he keeps turning his head and he's like digging I'm doing in. this for you, bro. And I'm like just let me scrape that bit of plaque off your tooth, just that bit there. Is this, is this a new thing, dog tooth cleaning? Because I grew up with dogs and we never cleaned their teeth. It depends teeth. on the I think dog. It is teeth, now. It, it depends on the yeah. dog. Like some okay. dogs, you don't have to clean their teeth. And are you worried about smelly breath or teeth falling out? He's already lost purpose? a bunch of teeth, so now we're much more careful oh. about what we give him. Oh no! Cavaliers have okay, cavaliers have enough. tiny heads like the size of like a walnut, and their brain is the size of like a tenth of a pea. And so, in that tiny head, they have to cram the same number of dog teeth, which is forty <laughs> teeth. Dogs have forty-two teeth, so when you get a dog with a big head. Right, they've got a massive head. They've got the same amount of teeth, 42, spaced out, lovely. You get a small dog head, like a chihuahua Mm. or a cavalier, and all their teeth are kind of overlapping. And you you basically, if you you touch their head too hard or with whatever, then the tooth just drops out. Like they're they're not genetically well made. Yeah. So, so Mm. this is a direction I did not think the pod was going. I like it. (laughs) So now now we've got, I understand dog exactly. tooth cleaning. And then just for Scottish <laughs> listeners, obviously I'm a bit devo that Scotland got knocked out of the, uh, oh, the Euros in the 99th yeah. minute. It's a few at least they put in a good performance, eh? <laughs> yeah. I thought that bloke was dead on the pitch. Uh, no. Come on. Well, because they put curtains around him. No. Did you not? I, I rewound no, it and watched it loads of times. I'm I was sure like, he was knocked yeah, out. Sadistic. Yeah. But yeah, nasty. He's all right, though. But, He's yeah. all right. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah, made a stir of stuff. Yeah. But the Euros generally has been shockingly bad. It's been a waste of. I must mm. have watched about five matches now in full, and I'll never get that time back. <laughs> you will never get that time back. I hope you're at least drinking good yeah, whiskey while watching. Of it. course, yeah. But I mean, think about I just it. It's ninety minutes. I'm waiting on my Italian passport so I can start claiming glory. Yeah. I reckon they're going to win it. <laughs> so. Um, Anna, but would you like to do Pudding Island Drams with us this week? I'd love to. Excellent. So, you know, uh, for people who listen to their first episode, um, and for Annabelle, Pudding Island Drams is you're going to an island or somewhere. It doesn't have to be an island, but typically it is for 30 days. Not for more than 30 days. Otherwise, it becomes survival. This is just about having some time to yourself. Right? So much needed time away from it. Sounds so yeah. dreamy. And then you have to choose one pudding or dessert that you're going to have one bottle of whiskey that you're going to have and uh, some music to listen to and who's going to collect you to take you back and in which way. So where, where would you like to tell us about your, uh, your island experience? My island. Yeah. Well, I did consider a classic desert island, but I thought a, that was a bit boring <laughs> and B that's actually not where I choose to go on holiday. So I thought, where do I actually choose to go on holiday? I choose to go to the mountains. Oh, okay. So I have envisaged this, by the way, it has to be in the summer because otherwise I will die in 30 days. <laughs> um, I've envisaged a giant mountain lake, you know, the ones that are like suspended, probably learned about them in geography lessons. Can't remember what they're called. Big lake with a little beautiful tree island. Like sit, on in, the middle. sit in the kind of the. Nice. Um... Yeah, exactly. So mountains yes, either side. Okay, yeah. Made by something like a glacier, probably, but we don't need yeah. to worry about that. As, as yeah, a Welshman, so also it's the valleys. Uh... There you go. So. <laughs> um, so you're... Yeah, so green mountains on either side, lovely clear water lake. Beautiful. I'm not terribly good at cold water swimming, but it can be warm. It doesn't have to be um, cold, yeah. does it? You said it was the summer. Sure island. Okay, fine. Warm. I, mean, I don't know the length of the mountains ever get warm, but warm, warm enough for me to swim in. That is perfect. Because the other thing about desert island, if I had chosen that, is just so many bugs and things yeah. to bite the toes, and I'm I'm actually don't really like sand either. <laughs> so no sand, no. Bugs. Whereas in the mountains. Yeah. No sound, no bugs. I mean, hopefully not even any mosquitoes because it'll be too high. This is going to be dreamy. <laughs> All right. So you've got a nice mountain setting lake. Um, where would you like to start? Do you want to start with um, pudding, whiskey or music? I don't mind. Maybe start with pudding then? Pudding, you yeah. said it first. Yeah. I don't know if this really counts, but 
just bars of milk chocolate. Okay. Oh, I mean, controversial. Loads and loads I mean, of them. Kieran from White and Mackay went cheese, cheese last week, so we sort of gave him that. Okay, so, perfect. Yeah. Do you have like, do you have like a favourite milk chocolate? Because there's such a variety. I do. Of <laughs> I do. Your face. I, yes, I, I do. Say <laughs> yes, I do. I don't think I am a connoisseur. I actually came across this totally by accident. It was also on the way back from the distillery because I spent quite a lot of time travelling between the distillery and London. <laughs> And I was very tired. We were in a rush. It was not good. The train was going. Yeah. The train was not going the wrong direction. The, the train was going backwards. <laughs> I was yeah. facing forwards. <laughs> um, but um, Keth, who was one of my team at the time, was driving with me. She produces this chocolate from her handbag about twenty minutes before we get to Glasgow. We've been on the road for three and a half hours. <laughs> Why did you not produce this before? And it was Tony's chocolate only. Tony's chocolate only. And it blew my mind with how delicious it was. So just their plain milk chocolate. Honestly, I could eat it all day, it every is day. I wouldn't need anything super caramelly. It's so good. Have you tried that, have you, Mike? It's, I'm yeah. glad you're a fan, Mike. Oh, huge Tony's fan. So good. Yeah. It's so good. Though. They do really good Easter eggs. So that's... And advent calendars. Oh, it's good to hear they've expanded yeah. the range beyond just the standard yeah. chocolate bar. <laughs> That's um. I mean, they've I like got, to know that before I invest so my, I you know, invest my taste buds into a chocolate oh. uh, product. <laughs> I would say they might even have too many types of chocolate. Like Impossible. there are so many. Impossible. So Tony's chocoloni, you'd have a, a little a wee fridge yeah, with that in just, it or something, keeping it. Love you, know, it. you probably wouldn't need a fridge in the mountains. I think yeah. it'd be alright. It's not going to melt anyway. And yeah. do, I don't know. Do bears, do bears eat so, chocolate? Probably. I don't know. Bears eat anything. Mm. Yeah. It's Maybe it's a bear free island. They <laughs> probably eat me before they eat yeah. the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tony's Chocoloni. And what about um, musical choice then? What would be your favourite album? Um, well, album's quite different. Everyone always says that. You just, but... it's, it's, it's not going to be on your gravestone. It's, I feel that people feel <laughs> yeah, too yeah, much yeah, weight yeah. on this subject, right? Artist, <laughs> I think so precious. Artist, artist is quite easy. It's the scissors okay, sisters. yeah. Ah, nice. Because I want to have a little party on this island. Anyway, all I will have done is eat milk chocolate. <laughs> so I'm going to have a lot of energy. <laughs> um, but I actually, yeah, the problem is that my favourite Scissor Sisters tracks are dotted across their album. So picking one the of them person. is quite difficult. But yeah, another, yeah, sorry. Um, but if I had to pick one, it would be Ta Da. Oh, that's good. Ta da! But I would feel like I was missing out. Yeah. But don't you feel like it's sometimes it's, it's nice got, just to listen I... to an album from start to finish and appreciate it for the for the collection of tracks that they put together? This is why people feel pressure, Duncan. I... I'm just saying. <laughs> it's no, no, something no, dear no, to no, me Duncan, as an individual. I, I do agree. Right. I do agree. I do agree. I do agree. And we don't do it enough anymore, right? Like, everyone's, everyone's attention span is tiny these days. Is... I don't even finish a song. It annoys oh, him so never much. Never have a two-man like, party with Mike. In. That's so good. Done. Next. Yeah. Two-person party with Mike. It's just, And he's got control of the music. It's painful. Disaster. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It really is. It can't 15 seconds and switch the track. You're like, oh, I'm just getting into this. Change. That's so bad. No, could not do that. It's like no. in his head, he's got some sort of no. monologue that it's a great night if he's listened to a thousand, a thousand different songs. <laughs> How many songs did you listen to last night? 1,225. Yeah, just trying to beat it every day. I will I'll beat that record. record. Gotta get better. Gotta get better. Yeah, okay. So Sister Sisters. No one said Sister Sisters yet. Um, mm. It's quite upbeat music, isn't it? Quite upbeat pop. Yeah, but I think I'm going to need that. Well, yeah, I think I will. I think, you know, I'll appreciate the peace and quiet, but I also really love people. And I think I might get quite lonely yeah. in 30 a bit days. Of a dance. I probably only need a day on my own. And so get you pumped for a bit of climbing yeah. as well. Yes. <laughs> It's funny that, isn't it? The difference because there's people who are um, extroverted and get energy from being around people, and people who are introverted who get energy from not being around people. I'm very much an introvert, but the old extroverts, this is quite a challenging task for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I am off the scale <laughs> extrovert. <laughs> so this torturous stay, thirty days on your own, is now is now yeah, absolutely. Just, I'm going to look at the people yeah. like climbing the mountains and be like. Come just talk wave. to me. I'm and not allowed to. You could be on your own. <laughs> uh, what about whiskey then? What whiskey would you choose then through this? Um... Um, well, my favourite one at the moment is Huntress Orchard Cobbler, which we released in April, and it's it's partly my favourite because it's absolutely delicious, mm. and everyone who's tried it thinks it's delicious. 
but partly because it's been a very long time coming and I've been very excited about it for a long time. So it's cool in both of those ways. But it is, it's really jammy and baked goody, if you like, and a little bit peppermint-y. And I think it's just got this cool array of flavours yeah. and would keep me entertained for you a while. You guys were actually kind enough to, do, to send us both a sample of that. Um, so we both tried. I've got it. What did you think? Yeah, I loved it. Nose, I said spearmint, short crust pastry, mm. cherry, raspberry jam, palate, grassy lemon, pear, apple, cardamom, mandarin, just loads going on. So, mm. yeah, how about you? On the nose, I got fresh soft pears, vanilla, sweet cherries, eucalyptus, gooseberries, mint leaves. And then on the palate, I put more cherries, orchard fruit, spicy marmalade. And then I it kind of went a bit sort of eucalyptus on finish. But what I will say is it's a 48.5%. It is very tasty as a dram. Now, we have listeners who will say, yeah, but it costs 79 quid. And it does cost 79 quid-ish or something like that. And so, yeah, it's not a cheap whiskey. It's a premium whiskey in a premium looking bottle. But probably make a lovely gift for someone, which is what I said at the time. And I think if you're not really worried about price. And it's organic. Yeah, it's organic. You're doing everything right on it. Do you know but what it I mean? Does, I, would, I would concur. It does taste very nice. Are you allowed to say... I mean, obviously, you say what you want. It's your place. But are you allowed to say... <laughs> how old the whiskey is it's gone into it because people often wonder about that before you say that if you yeah. were to delve back into the episodes and you've probably listened to all 57 or 58 episodes now i'm sure yeah all, all of them, them. <laughs> what a binge it was stuck on a train one of the blind drams that <laughs> <Claw> <laughs> yeah, that it was on. convenient wasn't it <laughs> one of the blind drams we did which we always harp on about uh, we've done so many of these now i can't even know how many many we've done but 28 people trying five whiskies, selected completely blind every time, usually cask strength or stronger, usually non-chill filtered. And the highest scoring ever one was five five-year-old whiskies. So yeah. I think when you're trying stuff in a short space of time, like 20 minutes, you know, if you're not going to sit with it for two hours, it doesn't need to yeah. be the oldest whiskey. So we're just coming mm-hmm. from that position. But I think people are still interested to know kind of like the composition and age of the whiskey regardless. Definitely. And you know what? If I could tell, if we could publish that for every single one of our whiskeys, yeah, we would, but obviously we're not allowed. Um, so the youngest whiskey in it was five years old. Okay. And a, so I would guess also a bit of six. There you go. Okay. Um, so five to six. What's the, what's, what's, what is the oldest whiskey that you've produced now? Uh, well, we started distilling in March 2017. So seven and a half yeah. maybe but we've never we've not well we have we have bottled i don't think we've bottled a single cask that is a seven-year-old yet although we might be about to and what, do, you, like, do you remember what the cask makeup was in that orchard cobbler huntress yes i do um it is actually a lot of uh, well more than we usually use of str red wine casks so in our nick nice. me and organic it's about half but in Orchard Cobbler, it is two thirds STR red wine mm. cask, thirty percent ish ex bourbon, and then a little sprinkling of sherry. So nice. same the same three casks that go into Nick Me and Organic, but in slightly different proportions, slightly more STR, slightly less. Yeah, and a bit of a higher ABV on it as well, forty eight and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. It's, exactly. It's, it's a good free whiskey. We, I do think that area of the market though, free whiskey is very competitive, right? Yes. It's, and so you you have to do something to stand out, I think, which obviously you guys are doing. But we had this recently, yeah. and there was an interesting story behind there, wasn't there, about how you actually come around it? It's the it's the switch over between yeah. the two mm. different types of spirits, two recipes. Yeah. So it's kind of a mistake, which I quite like as well. And I think <laughs> hey, our big a... are making a living <laughs> well, out of these not... days. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Not a um, not like a it's not literally a mistake i guess an unintended consequence or an unintended upside um so we make these two different spirit recipes in the distillery most of our spirit is designed to have a short maturation be really fruity fresh delicious kind of drinkable straight off the still and then we spend 10 percent of the time or production making a much more traditional recipe so primarily that means lower cut points on the stills so you're getting less of the higher fruity notes and more of the kind of vegetal less nice notes later on in the run hmm. but which don't taste nice immediately so it's not going to make a great young whiskey it needs 10 plus years in a okay. cask for those less nice notes that you've got out to develop into depth and yeah. flavor so none of that recipe has yet been released but what we found in our new make analysis when we sent it off to the lab and got the results back is that something really weird was happening in the week after we came off that second recipe and we went back onto our normal recipe designed for short maturation and these 
all of these flavor profiles, which is what we were looking for, were spiking in this week. And we're like, what is going on? And I said to Gordon, what are you doing in this week? Can you just do more of it? Because it's amazing. <laughs> and we then realized that no, he couldn't because all of the really fruity flavors that you're capturing with those high cut points aren't being captured when the weeks were on this long maturation uh, recipe. Yeah. And so they're building up in the low wines and faints tank, like concentrating and concentrating. And then when we go back onto the um, shorter maturation recipe, they all come flooding out in the first so week. So you could like engineer it again, but only in that switch over. Exactly. Yeah. Only by right, doing that. Okay. So I was like, well, that's cool. Anyway, and we're doing it anyway. So we just kind of kept those weeks aside in the yeah, warehouse cool. and I've Love just been it. itching to release yeah. them. <laughs> And finally, we got to it this yeah. year. It's, so. it's definitely got That's a lot going cool. on in it. I think um, it's nice to have a larger sample um, just to try it on different days mm. and stuff like that. But I don't feel like dreaming except on certain days when they end with a why, then heck, I will find a way. And if it happens to be Nick Nian, then that would really slay. But I don't feel like dreaming until after five today. I don't feel like dreaming, dreaming, though being honest, I really do. Don't feel like dreaming, dreaming, feel not having one will be rude. I feel like dreaming. Dramming, oh god, whiskey to pour with the crow in the shed. I'll cook all with you. So, you yeah. mentioned earlier about this. Well, we asked you before starting the pod about this uh, epic giveaway the giveaway to end yes. all giveaways. Everything must yeah. go, seemingly. Yeah, what? what? Who messed up? It, and it, from our perspective, before, before we get into explaining it, what we saw was everyone just sharing this link for free sample of Nuknean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone's like, yeah. it's a free sample. I think it was like a 50 mil, uh, you know, like a cardboard pouch yeah. thing. So it's posted in envelopes. It's really yeah. light touch in terms of like, you know, yeah. footprint. Um, and yeah. you just, you know, there's no posters to pay, nothing to pay. All you had to do was sign up. It's really, you didn't have to like promise anything. There was no Apple terms and conditions. No one's going to turn up to take your kids away in like 10 years. It was just <laughs> Can I click and go. And so everyone's sharing this link and it went pretty viral, I would say. Yeah. So what happened? Yeah. What was the, was it genius well, or a mistake? No, it was, it was not a mistake. It was quite intentional. Oh. Um, basically the thinking was we're a new distillery. We want people to try our products because we think they're good. And we think that if people yeah. try them, they'll buy them. Hmm. And we obviously, I mean, all distilleries do this, but they'll, we'll do lots of things to hope, you know, get people to try stuff. We'll go to whiskey shows. We'll, you know, even in bars, right? That's one of the benefits of being in a bar. People can try you. Um, but you also do other kind of marketing like Facebook advertising. And Facebook advertising used to be brilliant, right? In COVID, you it costs nothing. Yeah, they keep People jacking the prices up on their phones. Yeah. So, so, and now it's really expensive. So we were like, well, this isn't really working for us because we're basically having to pay Facebook the entire cost of a bottle to get people to buy a bottle. And oh, that's you know, that just that is, yeah. so, Side note on that, that is digital marketing these days. Uh, it's yeah. really hard to track stuff through Google Analytics now because of this whole battle between Apple and Google. So you can't even track a whole yep. bunch of your data. And then the price of yep. clicks and other types yep. of advertising are just going up and up and up. And you're kind of looking at it now exactly. going, the only companies that can afford it are the companies who have got endless VC pockets. And they're just going, mm. we will buy yep. 80% of the market or 60 or yep. 70% of the share. We yep. don't care. We're just going to keep doing it. So we hoover up all the demand, right? Exactly. Right, okay. Exactly. And we're like, we can't afford to play in this game. No. And so we were just brainstorming what else. So, uh, sorry, side note, minis. So we have these little minis, which are made of glass. They're five CL and they're really expensive and they're really unsustainable mm. because we can't get them in our recycled glass. There's obviously a lot of glass to whiskey ratio. It just, the heavy, it's just not a great situation. And we had found these pouches. Um, and the benefit of the pouches is that, as you say, you can post them. And instead of, if you put a little bottle in the post, you're paying for a package and that yeah, costs yeah. a fortune. Whereas the little pouches can go as a large letter, which actually is much more economical to post. So we were like, well, how about we say, guys, if you sign up to our newsletter, we will give you a free sample of whiskey because we figured, you know, it's quite a big deal to ask someone mm. to pay 50 quid for a bottle of whiskey if they haven't tried it. We owe it to them to let them try it first. It seems reasonable. It was, it's a, a great, so, a great bit of um, marketing then in that basis. And I know so we did. a lot of people who bought bottles from getting that sample. You told me Paul Hawksby. So, that Paul was Hawksby the idea. Bought, Paul Hawksby from Talksport. We you know, sent on to him and he was like, bought straight away, it. loved yeah. it. Yeah. So, love it. Yeah. And 
But you, do you want to know how much we paid Facebook for that whole campaign? You can share if you want. It was something like 72p. <laughs> because you, <laughs> because <laughs> people were sharing like, themselves, right? Exactly. So we weren't paying to share it all because it went off Facebook. But how many so, people tried it then? Do, are you, can you share that or? Oh, I can, but I can't really but, but remember. Like a, I think it was three, like 3,000. No, I think that's pretty good. 3,000. I, I expected free stuff to like go stratospheric no 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 it would have done but we didn't have any more pouches so (laughs) (laughs) no we just did the last thing we wanted right is for someone to sign up and then us not have a pouch because that's a terrible experience so no no we were watching the stock pretty carefully (laughs) what the main learning is we shouldn't have launched on a friday because it went stratospheric over the weekend which is you know that's when people are going to be sharing Mm. stuff as well but Sasha, who's our head of marketing, was like on the back end of our website, like watching the stock very carefully so that we didn't yeah. <laughs> accidentally sell out. It's, it's good though. I mean, like I had tried a couple of the batches before that. I once got a Selfridges triple pack and it included a bottle in. I bought another bottle a different time. So I've, I've bought at least two bottles of Nucnean in the past in some way. But I've also tried a couple of samples now. I'm just trying the, the Nucnean organic. Mm. And I have to, it's always really nice when people's tasting notes actually has the whiskey taste. This is a top test for us. So <laughs> when you say peach and apricot, yes. Spiced rye, yes. Spiced rye bread. And then a bit of lemony as well. I think it's, mm-hmm. I yeah. agree. We used to have lemon posset on there. And then one of our team was like, I don't even know what lemon posset is. So now I think it's just citrus. Yeah. But I actually do think lemon posset is better if you know what lemon posset is. We're back to the puddings here, but it picks up the creaminess, which otherwise it the does tasting have a bit notes miss. To it. What you could do is you could do a free giveaway of lemon possets and, um, <laughs> you know, don't pay 72p to Facebook and you just post it in an envelope, flatten an envelope. Yeah. Just a spoonful of it. This brings back slight. Um, <laughs> bad memories for me because in a previous life pre-whiskey I did some work in food and food safety and refrigeration in the post nightmare <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can think of you just post it from it. an anonymous source it's just you set up an anonymous website yeah, yeah, exactly. look it's nothing technically to do with you guys you just noticed it right have you seen these guys giving away a free spoon of lemon posset? They post it to an envelope. <laughs> that can't be safe. We don't know who, with, with we the don't know who they are, yeah. but I'm just saying, you can sign up for it. They'll post it to you. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's a lovely story, by the way, of the, the giveaway. We appreciate you explaining yeah. that. We, we both really found cool. it a bit fascinating. That's, I actually also it. joined that. Yeah. You had a little, you had a call. Because it, because it, because it was flying. Oh yeah, hmm. yeah, the, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Listening to you talking about things. Oh, thanks. Right. Yeah, that we just felt actually we did that wasn't planned originally, but we were like, shit, there's a lot of people got these pouches. <laughs> maybe they, maybe we should do something more. So we we're like, you know, we can just. How do can it. we stop them just shooting it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's amazing to think three thousand people plus got to try it. Um. So, uh, what one thing, if you could, would you change about the world of whiskey? Anything at all? It's yeah, there's a few yeah, things. Yeah, go for it. There are a few things. Yeah. Um, so, I think the first would be a personal one, which is it would be really nice if people didn't assume that just because I'm a woman, I don't like whiskey. Seems yeah. fair. It's really fucking annoying i'm like i've just told you i've spent 11 years of my life building this whiskey business and then they're like do you even like whiskey <sighs> like you would never Absolutely. ask a man that no yeah it's pretty brutal i think uh, so, so th- that's really annoying and to be fair it comes not from within the industry so this is definitely an outside of the industry thing this is a you know punch this on is the just just a common but... mis- misconception a sort of like leftover yeah. sort of attitude yeah. type of my wife is a massive whiskey exactly fan. i have a partner at home that drinks whiskey with me as in, yeah. she's not as nerdy about it as I am, but she loves, and if anything, she prefers peated whiskey to me. I, I mean, I like peated whiskey, but yeah. that's my perspective of it, which is that she's a total whiskey fan, right? Exactly. Yeah. And this is totally yeah, normal. Exactly. And it's so just it a spirit. Be. I grew up, my mum and nan drinking it. They're the only ones in the family that drank right. it. No one else drank whiskey. Right. But right. It's, it's probably it's probably like, look, there's a whole bunch of TV shows for years, which which just showed men drinking whiskey and and people smoking, and I, I think it's just a exactly. hangover from that, yeah. really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it goes even further back. So we actually wrote a blog on this because I was so fascinated by it. 
it goes back all the way into like hundreds of well not hundreds but 100 plus years ago culture where whiskey was associated with prostitution and then that's obviously a really bad right. thing so then all respectable women are like ain't nothing to do with me i don't yeah. drink whiskey oh, okay. and yeah there's like seriously long ago history yeah that has like paved and yes i completely agree with you duncan a lot of the like more recent you know tv shows it's a lot of that as well but this has been like a long long time yeah what's that thing. one with don draper and the, um the advertising agency that was a, that was Mad Men. Mad that was Men. a modern show but which basically yeah. was a throwback to the 70s and i think i said to mike before on the pod exactly if it if it was anything like that to actually work at those places i don't know how they coped they were just drunk all the time, <laughs> I know, smoking all I know, the time. Can you imagine, you know, pretty male-dominated environment, right? But that was supposed to be representative of that period. I don't know how much embellishment they had, and they were just drinking whiskey exactly. all the time. Exactly, and even if it wasn't representative, that's such a popular TV program that it's got into yeah, our. That's what every, that's law <laughs> now. Everyone knows it. I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. that's what I mean. And there was, if you look back at all the other stuff, there'd always be um, like some hard man in some show drinking whiskey. I think back to Daniel Craig in. Um, layer cake mm. and he sits he sits down he's like in his jeans topless on the sofa whatever and he pours himself a large whiskey and you get a lot of that in tv shows whereas you don't often see you do sometimes yeah. but you would rarely see a lady actress yeah. or, or actor however you say it these days actor how dare actor, you don't actor, actor you're gonna get us cancelled oh, <laughs> i can't cope with all these word changes have a, have themselves a whiskey so i think a lot of it's just to no, popular culture exactly basically. exactly I completely agree. I completely agree. I was going to say, did you ever see... Yeah, yeah, um, go on. What's that? Oh, this is so bad when I do this. That TV show, ITV, is it Mariella? Mar it, um, oh, she, she was in Channel 4. Just nod. She was, she was in Brookside or something for a while. Very famous English. Uh, Come on, help me out here, Mike. She plays a detective in it or something. Oh. Ooh. Is it Mariella? like gingery hair. Mariella. A few moments later... Basically, I was going to say is she she always goes to the fridge and gets a beer out. And I thought, I remember thinking at the time, that's good because even like these days in most TV shows, it'd be like, oh, the lady, the lady has a glass of wine, but she's drinking yeah. beer out of the fridge. Exactly. Because guess what? Tons Absolutely. of women drink beer, right? Lager. Yeah, imagine that. So true. So true. In fact, I've got a lucky saying right here. Ah, oh, nice. Um, yeah, and you know, but but if I if we were talking beer, I would have said the same thing. There is still an assumption that women don't drink beer as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. So what's your next thing then? My next thing is that I'm going to use a sports analogy here. So Olympics coming up. There's really amazing people at sport and they go to the Olympics. And then there's normal people like me who occasionally run for five minutes and then decide that's far too hard work <laughs> but try and do some other things instead. And it's a whole spectrum. And no one's like, you have to be really amazing to participate in sport. And the really amazing people don't take the piss out of the not so amazing mm. people. And it's all just one nice inclusive thing. Um, whereas I feel like in whiskey, we've maybe put some barriers up and tried to differentiate between the people who are just starting out on yeah. their journey and who are really, really into it. And I would like to think they can peacefully coexist a bit more 100%. than maybe they do at the moment and i'd like really like to see that change a bit so that there's no because i see a lot of people say oh i don't want to try because mm. i don't know enough about it and i think that's really sad like yeah. you don't need to know the difference between a single model and a blend you just need to try it and tell me if you like it and that's it yeah massively and i'd really like and that's what I we were, we're kind of looking to do um again I mentioned paul hawksby three times this episode um he's quite sort of He's, he's been to Ilo, he's experienced whiskey, but he's still yeah. quite new in terms of like what casks yeah. can do to the, the spirit yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So we're going to try and do a sort of uh, a beginner series with him and take him through like what it. we can do with different casks yeah. and different experiences and build him up from there. So yeah, that is something I, love it. I feel quite strongly because yeah, the first time you try it, it's always, you know, uh, a bit of an experience. And until someone puts their arm around you and tells you, what you should be experiencing, don't shoot it, this, that, exactly. and the other. Yeah, and then it opens exactly. up a whole new world. But yeah. Exactly. And I'm very keen on more people experiencing that opening up of a whole new world. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's just a bit sometimes you haven't got someone to put their arm around there you. Go. And what a cue. We can do a Disney song, a whole new world <laughs> right here, Duncan. That's a whole new world. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Note it down. It was Anna Frail, <laughs> by the way, in in uh, Marcella. Ah. That was killing me. It was oh. actually that was really 
Yeah. That was gonna, that was gonna ruin yeah. my evening. So I had to have a quick look it up. <laughs> I knew you were doing it. You went I had quiet. to. I was listening, but at the same time, I, I can't get it out of my head. So, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to share or talk about today on the pod? Either about the distillery or the whiskey or just anything Ooh. in general, any topics you'd like to you'd like to cover? Ooh. Putting you on the spot. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't gone prepared oh. for this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. That's <laughs> yeah, right, because we, we let uh, yeah. it out. But if there is, uh, great opportunity for you to... Anything on the horizon? Oh, always lots of things on the horizon. That's always the exciting bit, especially with a new distillery, because there's always, you know, new bits that you get mm. to, new milestones. And quite terrifyingly, in 2027, which is starting to feel not that futuristic, uh, yeah, it's going to be 10 years. And then we're going to have to work out what to do with this long maturation recipe that yeah, I talked about the beginning. Because the more vegetable one, which hopefully won't still be more vegetable by 2027. But I'll hopefully let you judge of that. I'm getting carrots. Done, we actually haven't done like a, I always get purple carrots when they're really veggies. I don't know why. Beetroot. Yeah. <laughs> spice bomb. Sweet um, and spicy is the, is my Yeah, straight to S and yeah. WS. Sell yeah. a lot. Yeah. That's it. With <laughs> yeah, exactly. the first Nugnean at SMWS. Yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah. tenure they hated. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it, it'll be something like sixty one point four percent. Exactly. <laughs> we advise opening it up and leaving the cork off for about a hundred days. Then approach with <laughs> oven. Oh no! I have. Assu- I assume you're thoroughly testing that just to see how it's developing. Um. Well, obviously, we thoroughly testing is one of the joys of the job. Yeah. Um, we actually, well, <laughs> you say that we're actually not thoroughly testing it that much because we have Dunnage Warehousing as a pain to thoroughly test stuff. And we've intentionally put all the long maturation recipe on the bottom. So, but we do test them occasionally. And I have to say they're already actually delicious, which is kind of surprising. People, people are obsessed um, with Dunnage Warehousing. I, I feel like yeah. I didn't know that you guys were doing that. That feels like something maybe to push more up front. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's all Dunnage. Yeah. There's yeah, a, I there's a, that. yeah, I just think because the, 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 there's all the organic side and, you know, the careful recipe, but yeah. actually, you know, like all this direct fire stuff, Dunnage warehousing, that's all the stuff. That's yeah, 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 the, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, uh, the, the geek, the whiskey, whiskey, geek whiskey geeks geek like us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is all Dunnage. So it forces you into practical storage thinking when you're actually putting stuff away because the last thing you want is that cask at the back. People just want to hear it's chaos. Just say it's chaos. It's moss everywhere. Oh. It, is, it is quite often quite chaotic. But, um, they want the opposite of neatly racked. The first Dunnage warehouse that we built, Gordon, who's our wonderful distillery manager, was at Oban before, where obviously they definitely did not have Dunnage warehousing. In fact, they had no warehousing because it all went off-site for storage. Mm. So we had no warehousing experience. So we were kind of making it up from scratch, the whole how do you make a Dunnage warehouse thing. And, it, and our builders had done the most horrendous job of levelling the floor, like the earth floor thing oh. that you're putting the rails on. And so if you, I mean, if you imagine building Lego off a wonky base, it's not a great start. And then when the battens that we bought were too small, and to go into the first one, luckily a lot of them have been rebuilt now as we've started to take the cast <laughs> out, but they're all like on an angle like this or like this. and um, There's just tape around the outside, like, no, don't go too close, but they're where, there. Where is the, where, like, they might, it's, west of, it's west of Scotland, the distillery. It's opposite it is. Isle of Mull, isn't it? You're over from Correct. From if you stand in our distillery, you can see Tobe Moore opposite. On a good day. Sometimes you can't even see us there. Does that mean that you're you're getting any kind of like saltiness imparted into the casks? How close are they to the, the sea or other conditions? They're really close. And you can tell that because the warehouse doors, which are metal, go rusty. Ooh. So we know there's a lot of salt in the air, but it doesn't show up in the whiskey. And but I it can't might explain do why. In time. I mean, I don't think it, it does anyway. Do yeah. Maybe it's time. Yeah, maybe it's time. Maybe once you get to sort of 10 years plus. Yeah, maybe. That's a really good question. Mm. Well, this old recipe, the long maturation recipe, maybe that's where we'll find the salt. But I think there's another thing, like dunnage, like by the sea. This is kind of stuff that people love to hear, right? Yeah. You know, I think Talisker's have already taken that by the sea. <laughs> yeah, that's thing, true. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know Talisker was by the sea, where have by you been? By salty water. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're right up on the, we're right out there on the West Coast and very, very remote. Most people who make the pilgrimage to the distillery are like... God, yeah. why did you build a distillery pilgrimage. here? How, how difficult is it to get to the distillery then, if it's a pilgrimage? Um, it's not easy, I'm not going to lie. So Fort William's the nearest town. It's where the supermarket is, for example. 
Um, and from there, you can get public transport easily to Fort William, bus, train, etc. But from there, you really need to have your own car. Um, and you'd have to take a little ferry. So we're on the mainland, but you, you don't have to take a ferry. You can drive around, but it's a long way. So you take a little ferry, which takes literally two minutes. And then you get onto the other side. Like, okay, this is fine. Double track road, lovely views. And then you turn off onto the single track road. You think, oh, we must be nearly there. And 45 minutes later, you're oh, still God. on a single track That's road. That's the classic thing. It's a, it's a tease of you. You feel like we should be close. And then the single track just goes on forever. That's not just, that happens in a lot of places. That was like when Satnav first came in and they're just taking you to an all single track road. You're like, no. Yes, exactly. When it didn't have the like mileage versus yeah. time calculation. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and then the single track road actually ends at the sea and then you turn onto a track and a mile and a half down there <laughs> is the it. distillery right so you've got to so the last bit then sort of thing or <laughs> no it's drivable <laughs> just the track in good way no it is drivable i mean obviously all of our molten and everything comes in down, when are you so building the airbnb that. cottages that's the, then, exactly. then talk to me yeah. People, like, the more remote it is, the better it is for like an Airbnb or something. Yeah. It'd be quite cool to camp out, actually. It's very cool camping. And we do have none distillery owned, but we do have lots of amazing Airbnbs. And there's an actual B&B, as in... Oh, okay. You could do it like... Have you ever been on the border between South Korea and North Korea? And, yes. But, so when you're All on the, the border, time. basically the North Koreans, they've put up like fake towns, like big like cardboard structures and stuff. So it looks like there's stuff going on. You could do it where people stop really? and then you could yeah. you could have like fake dinosaurs and stuff in the background. People wouldn't they'd be at such a distance, people wouldn't be sure. They'd be like, I think that's a dinosaur. Just and then just like some of that, that kind of <laughs> wire mesh stuff that looks like it it's trying to stop people from coming in or or stop things from getting out. Yes, I love it. <laughs> dinosaur safari park. I thought you were gonna say you could just have like a view of the New York skyline <laughs> to make urban dwellers feel yeah, more that would work as well. So much, so much has gone in. So much of the message is around the sort of organic side and the bottle and the the, the careful production spirit. And there's just a couple of things like that I think that the real, like you know, hardcore whiskey fans are really into, like the forty six percent non chill filtered, the fact it's done warehousing, the fact it's you know, regardless of the fact whether there's any salinity in the whiskey, it's-, it's all bottled on site. So that and that is for lots of reasons, but mostly because we like the control. I like being yeah. able to know that my team have tasted everything that goes into a bottle. It's also because we're a bit disorganised and it's much easier to work with our own team than it is <laughs> an indie bottle. No one knows if it goes wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's also very, um, it's also very handmade from like, you know, we're a pretty small distillery, but it takes two people to operate the distillery for most of the day. We don't have a computer system that controls it. It's still actual valves you open and buttons you press to turn pumps on and stuff. So you need to push this. People don't know this. I think that's. I think that's the bit. I mean, there is some really great marketing coming out, but. You know, there's two different types of, I think the general market the stuff like definitely cuts through, like you're going to pick that bottle mm. off the shelf at Selfridges or somewhere else. And and what do we know? We're not going to hear sales figures or anything like that. But for, for the hardcore whiskey fans, there's some things that we're really into. And some of the things you've been saying today are, are, are kind of those things, you know, the remoteness, the location. Yeah. I mean, look, even though Bimber is, does great whiskey and it's on an industrial estate. <laughs> <day. laughs> if you could put a couple of burnout yeah, cars nearby, that that would be... has no impact, but... But regardless, you know, I mean, I didn't realize, I mean, I've read the website and stuff, but I didn't realize how, how, how you could see um, Isle of Mud and Tom Murray from across the way, right? You know, it's, yeah. a, bit like the, it's a bit like the whole Bunnahavin versus uh, Jura. You can see Jura, Jura. from Bunnahavin, right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, should we do a wrap up or is there anything else you guys want to talk about today? I want to be rescued. Oh, oh yeah. I got to be rescued. Oh, at- no, we no, left you on the island. <laughs> we... <laughs> I've been eaten by a bear. It's <laughs> because you brought chocolate. And Amber. I've run out of chocolate. You're gonna, you're gonna bring, bring unlimited bars of uh, Tony's chocolate. So who is going to pick you up from the islands? <laughs> Slip that edit in there. We'll edit. <laughs> this is why I'm like, I, I spent a long time thinking about this. I've got to get this in we, there. We actually, we actually had a chat before. We said, is this the one person that gets left on the island? The <laughs> oh, See if she notices. <laughs> Yeah, who's going to pick you up? Um, well, can I choose a mode? Yeah. To pick up? This was easy. Yes. A paddleboard. That, because I'm Ooh. really going to have been dreaming of a paddleboard when I'm on the island. So they're going to come on a paddleboard. And I was like, mm, who would I want on a paddleboard? And initially I was thinking someone from history. And then I couldn't really imagine Nelson Mandela on a paddleboard. So <laughs> Stop I thought... <laughs> me! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't, I didn't, I thought he might not ever make it, he might have fallen in. Um, 
so I've actually gone for a female sporting hero, Jessica Ennis Hill. Oh, yes. I think she'd be a safe pair of hands on a paddleboard. Absolutely. And she's also super cool. I feel like she could she be like too good? Be like, right, you you're like mm. trying to get a relaxing time home. She no mm. no. Annabelle, push yeah. it harder. Push harder. Yeah, yeah. You're doing it wrong. Oh, she'd turn up and she'd just hand you like a stopwatch and say, intervals now. Just take this Time seriously. Yeah. <laughs> when all I've done for 30 days is eat chocolate yeah. and drink whiskey. She turns up. It's not going to go turns up there's just well, chocolate wrappers everywhere. She's like, you haven't been taking training seriously, have you? Have you fed the bear chocolate? The bear's sleeping. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. On a paddle board. Excellent. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have somebody Love that hasn't it. said their other half uh, again. Oh, so good. <laughs> Someone that's not lying. I've, yeah. I've listened to you berating people for choosing their other half. So I wasn't going to make that <laughs> just, We just offer our opinion. I mean, beration is a, is a strong... Uh, it's a lie. Yeah. That's why it's a cast lies. As if their partners are going to listen to it. They go, oh, I mentioned you. Oh, shut up. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> go, just going back to Brandon, go, I said that I, I wanted you to pick me up from this island. You're picking me up from the island. Like, what are you talking about, you idiot? The island doesn't it's, it's exist. Just an, Stop talking just about whiskey. Story. Do something else. Yeah. You've got shopping to do. So, Annabelle, it's been a real joy to have you on today. Thank you so much. Thanks for doing your Pudding Island Drams. Thanks for having me. What fun. <laughs> she actually looks genuine as well. <laughs> Thank you, Annabelle. Um, yes, thank you for everyone else for listening. You can find us in all the usual places on social media at honestomalt.com and at honestomalt on Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever it is now, and everything else. Follow Annabelle. What is your hashtag? Are you on Insta and Twitter? I am. You can follow me, Annabelle Thomas One, and follow Nick Nian, which is just at Nick Nian. Beautiful. Thank you for listening, everyone, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye bye bye. <laughs> Mike and Duncan on this ride.